that you got the API classification. Right now that is SN for gasoline and it is CJ4 for diesel oil. It's a whole different thing. But what I'm telling you is on this bottle there are specifications that are put on the label so you, the consumer, can read them and know what you're buying. Everybody got that? The viscosity rates are important because now we see manufacturers more and more <laughs> intent on having a specified viscosity band in their automobiles that they want you to use. So it's a lot more now 520. For a while it was 530, I believe it was 1040 before that. So the oils are getting thinner and they're having to perform in more arduous conditions. But when you read that bottle, that's the information you're supposed to get on the bottle. Okay? Now, you can also find on that bottle sometimes what's called an API starburst or a uh, donut uh, symbols that are on there. Now, those have to do with API licensing. And now we don't want to confuse license with meeting the API specification. Because a oil company can meet the specification and not buy the license and put on their bottle that they meet the API SM rating. However, they cannot put the API donut on their bottle unless they pay for it. You understand? So that's all we're talking about is if I pay for it. It's not whether you can meet it. And you know what's interesting on that is Amsoil is one of the first companies that there was a lot of uh, controversy on about whether or not we met the API specification. Now if you look, all the high mileage oils, they're classified high mileage, valvoline high mileage, cast oil high mileage, a mobile high mileage, any of them say high mileage, they do not have the API licensing on them because they're additive packages, not within spec for the API classification. So, what do they put on their bottle? Did they meet or exceed the API testing parameters for the oil? But they're not API licensed. And the reason is they don't meet every aspect and they're not going to buy the license for that oil and change their oil. So, this is more common throughout the industry now. But the important thing is for us to know. Consumer looks on the bottle, they're looking to see my owner's manual says I gotta use an API SN rated oil. This says SN, okay, that's good. I gotta use a 530. This says it's a 530. Okay, I'm good on that. As far as the energy conserving starburst bubbles and all those kind of things, they may or may not be there and that's not gonna uh, affect the warranty of the automobile. But the classification could, okay? Even the viscosity can today if we're talking about particular engines. When you look at this first one that you got, which is called API Ames Lawsuit at Bullseye Oil, right? I'm not going to read these in detail and spend a lot of time, but what I am going to tell you, if you look at this, what you find, it says in the lawsuit, the API claims that Bullseye knowingly deceived consumers by labeling its motor oil with false API accreditation. API adds that Bullseye Motor Oil neither meets performance standards that warranted API certification or has a license to use any API trademark. But see, the difference there is, and I'm going to say it, you can't, our XL oil and our OEO has the API donut on it. That's because we pay for the license. Okay? It's only. You cannot put that license on your bottle unless you pay the API for it. Now, in this lawsuit, they're claiming, you got to you read this thing through. They want a million dollars every time that thing showed up. So a 12 court case would be $12 million. They want a million dollars for every time that label was used. What they're really saying is that if we even win part of this lawsuit, whoever you are are bankrupt and gone. Right. Because we're not going to tolerate this. And part of it is maybe using the, the donut itself they would have gotten in trouble for. But when in fact the oil didn't even meet the basic classification requirements, that's like rubbing salt in the wound for the API. They were not going to put up with it. And uh, it says down there, API is seeking preliminary and permanent injunctions of monetary relief, including damages sustained by API in the amount not yet determined, but believed to be well in excess of 75000 It also seeks statutory damages of $1 million per counterfeit mark per type of goods sold. That's a big suit. And down here uh, at the end, it talks about that uh, 
consumers should continue to avoid the bullseye brand. See, they can't even put them out of business. Can you imagine that? They know what they're doing, and all they can do is take them to court as a suit because there is no federal or state organization that, as you were talking about, Dave, that just goes out and monitors this with criminal penalties or, or gigantic fines or those kind of things. It has to go into civil court for the API, which is not a governmental organization. It's an independent organization, the American Petroleum Institute. So they can't just act as if they're the EPA or something and fine you. They have to actually go to court. So the question is asked, how, the public can't possibly expect that this is how we we get by in the oil industry is that there's no real governmental uh, oversight group that looks at this and guarantees that the consumer's not being shafted. Folks, there really isn't, okay? Now the states, like we'll see in a few minutes, have decided that their consumer protection division at the state will take this stuff on because the federal government doesn't have any controlling entity for it. Okay, so that's the first one. The lawsuit against Bullseye. So they don't, they can't get the FBI to put under the Tommy gun and take these guys out? <laughs> so where is Bullseye's hold? I've never seen that. I'm not sure in there. I didn't look to see. It probably says, it might say if you read the whole thing, that Bullseye where it's sold. But the next one is Michigan Yanks, Substandard Lubes. Okay? And this is by George Gill, uh, September 18, 2013. And it says, a Michigan agency on September 12 announced stop use and stop removal orders for motor oils and transmission fluids from City Petroleum of Dearborn and Star Petroleum of Detroit. It says, these products should no longer be used, immediately be removed from store shelves or other product displays, and no longer be offered for sale. These products may cause damage to vehicle engines, the department stated, after a presentation on problem oils at a weights and measures conference, staff began to sample the Michigan market. Department spokesman Jennifer Holt told the report, the agency said that as part of an 11-month investigation, it discovered the motor oil and transmission fluids sold by companies don't contain the amount of product claimed. In addition, the agency noted that the motor oil doesn't meet the viscosity label on the containers. For example, the container may say the product is a 5W30 motor oil, but doesn't meet that viscosity or other specifications for a motor oil. According to photos of products models posted on the agency site, City Petroleum 5W30, 10W30, 10W40 grades are labeled as SA products, while the equivalent Star Petroleum grades are labeled as SB. Both categories are obsolete. In SA engine oil, contains no additives and isn't suitable for use in gasoline-powered auto engines built after 1930. <laughs> While SB isn't suitable for use in such engines built after 1951. The photos indicate that the City Petroleum Automatic Transmission Fluid has no designation. While Star Petroleum ATF is labeled as Type A Fluid. It says these two companies are selling substandard product and the stop use and stop and removal orders that your Michigan consumers and businesses alike are getting what they pay for. It says that the director of uh, Star Petroleum emphasized the company is not misrepresenting anything on its own branded lubricant bottle label. The Star Petroleum brand is what we call our low-end market oil, where people are looking for a $1.99 quart of oil to top off with. <laughs> the state of Michigan pretty much Join hands with the API and the big oil companies that decided they basically want to ban this oil out of the market, he asserted. I hope so. I hope they want to ban it out of the market. So anyway, it's um, another report coming from Michigan. We'll have another one read in a minute. But uh, how did Michigan find it? Because we asked, how did they find it? Well, 11 months, they pulled this stuff off the shelves and tested it. Now, I don't know how many cars might have went down the tube in, those 11, in 11 months. 11 months. We know. Before that. So now the next one is North Carolina. Moving around the country briskly. 
North Carolina issued an official ban on the sale of Everclear motor oil after tests found 95 samples failed to meet proper levels of viscosity and several other industry standards. The North Carolina Department of Agriculture and Consumer Services stock sale order applies to three grades of oil label 530, 1030, and 1040, which all fail to meet viscosity levels would protect against engine wear, the department said, and so forth. It says, after finding Everclear motor oil bottles with labels claiming the American Petroleum Institute SC category, which is obsolete for engines built after 1967, the agency standard division put the oil through a complete kinematic testing process for viscosity levels and found that the oil had most likely been recycled and resold without the addition of proper additives. The oil even looked dirty, Director ben, uh, Stephen Benjamin told the report. Inspectors from standard divisions have held 175 cases of every oil at warehouse distribution centers in Greensboro, North Carolina, Charlotte, North Carolina, and the agency is urging all retailers and distributors of the product to return it to their suppliers immediately. It's not necessarily the distributor's fault, Benjamin noted, adding that it's not clear how much of the oil is still in distribution centers and storage tanks are on shelves. Is it, it says, um, do you have to, um, is it illegal to sell recycled oil, or does it have to be labeled if you do sell it? Recycled oil, if it's recycled correctly, there's a system of doing that. Valvoline has a, a brand of it, but it has to have new additives put in it. It says on it that it's recycled oil. They count it as being recycled as a clean right. effort for it. it still has to meet the standards. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah you can't just sell it. Right. You can't just take it out of the used blue pot at the station <laughs> and bottle, <laughs> start, bottle it up and sell it. Buy local. <laughs> yeah. The so New Jersey-based Petroleum Quality Institute of America also tested samples of Everclear oil several years ago after purchasing the bottle in Indiana. The independent testing and consumer advocacy organization found the oil contained high levels of aluminum, chromium, iron, silicon, and copper, and that it lacked the requirements of obsolete SC category on its labels. So again, guys are doing it, and. Uh, if we had to ask the question, why are they doing it, what would the answer be? Make more money. Make more money. They found a way to sell junk and make significant profits off of it. So goes the story of the human race. Here we go. Don't mislabel in Missouri. I would advise that. It says, Missouri has banned the sale of several dozen brands. Banned it. They didn't just find it or say fix it. Banned it. Get this stuff out of our state. Don't bring it back. Dozen brands of misrepresented motor oil, automatic transmission fluid, and antifreeze. These guys are going all out. It says the agency's test revealed that motor oils in question were labeled with misleading information. Some had less product than claimed. Some advertised the wrong SAE viscosity grade, and others contained used motor oil. Now, these guys are moving. Oh, goodness. It says, uh, here we go. Several brands have. Uh, products banned in all three categories, including Orbit, Super Triple X, and Bullseye, which is also banned in Michigan. Bullseye's getting around. Yeah. And the guy says, I admire that uh, Missouri's Weights and Measure Division is taking a look at what's happening in the marketplace, seeing that there are products out there that are mislabeled and can, in some instances, damage vehicles. And uh, it says, this is the, one of the first states to test and ban antifreeze products. The department found that Bullseye, North Atlantic, Orbit, Super Triple X, Supreme Triple X, antifreeze product contained less than what the labels claimed and failed to meet the advertised blend of ethylene glycol and water. In other words, you know, you can buy the pre mixed 50 50 in the bottle. Uh, in this case, it was probably there with 5% in the bottle and the rest was pure water and selling it as a 50 50 mixture. How, now, much, how much responsibility does the distributor have in it? Well, uh, I was looking here because the one that I don't have here, I couldn't find, was the one in Indiana. The one in Indiana, the state of Indiana got really, really perturbed. And they find the, uh, the quick service, it's not a quick loop, it's a, like a circle K. It's not a circle K. It's a, something's just in Indiana, a chain of those kind of small stores that sell gasoline. And they have a little store there. And they were selling this oil as their oil inside that uh, Quick shop, right? 
And so they got fined a significant amount for selling this particular company's oil because in Indiana they felt like that they should have done a little due diligence since the Indiana uh, government agency had never heard of this oil company. So if it's that big, that, that kind of situation, nobody knows what it is, who it is, or where it came from, you might be suspicious just to check them out before you do everything on your shelf. You know, so. And this is a, sort of a roundup, this last one, which I think is just covered again. It's by the guy that writes for uh, the Lube Notes guys. And he uh, says states go after shoddy lubes. He sort of summarizes the, the state inspector ordered 17 retailers, two wholesalers in March, to stop selling 41 suspect products. This is again in Missouri. Lawsuit filed in St. Louis City County. Attorney General Chris Custer alleges the five retailers knowingly sold fraudulent products to consumers to damage their cars. The five retailer locations include Shell, Phillips 66, Unique Mart, Kenny's Discount, and Quality Market Stores. So even some guys' gas stations that have the nice name out on them, you know, they were participating in trying to make a little extra cash. Alabama, which we didn't.